Welcome back everyone. As so often happens, I do a video and then I read the comment section and somebody mentions something and I go, hmm, that's, that's a good topic for a video. In fact, I have written down a lot of potential future videos just by reading the comment section. Sometimes I can get to them right away and, you know, sometimes I, you know, might consider doing a video on it in the future or and maybe I'll never get around to it who knows it just depends but in the last video somebody mentioned about uh, class D amplifiers what about their damping factor so I wanted to see if I can take a look at that well to cut to the chase class D amplifiers do have negative feedback it's all about control theory if you want to learn more about control theory, it's a pretty interesting subject. You know, feedback is used in, of course, electrical, electronic systems, mechanical systems. You know, think of a thermostat. You know, you set it for a certain temperature, and the heater comes on and warms the place up. The thermostat detects it, shuts it down when the temperature's at the right point. So it's, you know, it's all about feedback. But more interestingly, feedback is evident in everything from biological systems to uh, even modern society and monetary systems and things like that. It's pretty interesting. But anyhow, it's not about that. Let's take a look at this Class D amplifier. I'll try to measure it. Here is the problem. You know, it has an LC low-pass filter. Oh no, my battery just went. Stay tuned. Okay, back again with the new battery. Anyhow, yeah, the uh, the output of these things have a low pass filter because there's that that high switching frequency that's used, and that needs to be filtered out before it goes onto the speaker. The problem is when this is not under the proper load, you might get some really wonky voltages. So I may not be able to produce an accurate measurement. But hey, uh, let's take a crack at it, see what happens. All right, I have the uh, amplifier turned on. It's running about nine volts RMS output. With no load, surprisingly, it's giving a decent signal. So let me touch the 8 ohm load to the output. 8.81 so it does drop a little bit 9.01 so the output impedance of this amplifier is a little higher than the uh, class AB ones I tested in the other video and the reason for that is likely due to the output inductors they do have some resistance in them DCR so they're going to cause some voltage drop, but it, you know, it doesn't appear to be a lot. Okay, so after running the calculations, the amplifier's internal impedance, well, resistance, I guess, is 182 milliohms, and that corresponds with a damping factor of 44 using an 8 ohm load. So yeah, it is a lot lower than we had with the uh, Class AB amp, the TDA2050, where we measured, I think it was 1,000 at 20 hertz, and at 1,000 and 10,000 hertz, it was beyond my ability to measure it with the oscilloscope. Okay, well, what I'll do now is test it at 20 hertz and 10 kilohertz, and we'll see what the outcome is. Like I said in the other video, a high damping factor is not necessary. Okay, so my findings are at 20 hertz, the damping factor was the same, about 44. But at 10 kilohertz, the damping factor dropped down to 4.2. In other words, the internal impedance of the amplifier went up to just under 2 ohms, 1.9 ohms. But again, I think that's due to the reactance of these coils. It's affected by the load that you put on the output. 
so you know trying different loads it's going to give me a different reading at the higher frequency these inductors are really set up to work with a single output impedance so if you look at the data sheet for the amplifier they'll give you the output the recommended uh, ratings for the coils and capacitors at different load impedances so you have to consider that well hey guys John Audio Tech in front of the camera appreciate watching the video I want to try something different here what I want to do is a question and answer type thing what I'm going to do is respond to some of the questions that pop up in the comment section and uh, we'll see how it works I'll make a video and try to answer some of the questions uh, obviously I can't get to everybody's question nowadays I get so many questions and comments I can't respond to everything but uh, just ask a audio or electronics related question a question about me if you want uh, you know something along that lines and oh, I, whoa <laughs> a cat just shot up here he's running around slapping his mouse toy around running throughout the house just being crazy but anyway a little cat interruption again for you yeah i want to try this out see how it works out maybe i can get some more questions answered like i say i, I just get so many i can't respond to everybody's question Sometimes the questions, like uh, the video I made today, came from a comment. That does happen often. And uh, sometimes I just write the question down and prepare it for a future video. Uh, you know, at some point, if I get around to it. And if it's related to the topic I just did, like damping factor, you know, I might shoot an immediate follow-up video. So uh, give that a try and see how it works out. Thanks for watching. Somebody mentions, mentions. Okay, TDA 2050. I want to see that coil get really hot. Oh, that's nice. Incandescence.